Right. Here's a story I wanted to tell this afternoon, and actually I did tell it, but I didn't record it for some reason. So now I'm recording it. The second Rebbe of Chabad, who was called the Mitla Rebbe. <clears throat> Mitla Rebbe means the middle Rebbe, because they thought that the third Rebbe was supposed to be the Mashiach. <clears throat> he had all the qualifications, but for some reason he wasn't. Anyway, he was called the middle Rebbe. He was the one that moved Lubavitch, Chabad, Hasidim to Lubavitch. He was the son of the first Rebbe of Chabad, the one who wrote the Tanya. So he had a um, a group of Hasidim that were made a, a, an orchestra, and another group that were singers, and another group that were um, acrobats, and some of them were even um, horseback riders. And regularly at holidays when it was permissible to do such things like in Purim, Hanukkah, or the intermediate theories of the holidays, or the Hasidic uh, holidays, like Yutet Kislev, for instance. So he would uh, announce that these uh, performers would perform, and everyone in Lubavitch would come. There was a, a big a Jewish population in Lubavitch. That's where the whole Hasidim were, but there was more. There were more non-Jews. It was a non-Jewish town in, uh, what I guess, right, white Russia at that time. And it would usually be in the middle of uh, some sort of a holiday. But um, it happened that one week, the Rebbe just announced for absolutely no reason that he wanted to make a circus. And it wasn't the holiday and it wasn't something special day or somebody's birthday. But nevertheless, everybody obeyed and they all ran, got their instruments and their, you know, they took the horses out of the corrals and they got their put on their good clothes and everyone got together and the non-Jews also and it was a big circus and everybody was happy and they were dancing and they were singing of course the men were separated from the women etc but it was very happy suddenly one of the horses threw its rider threw the rider off stumbled and the rider came with a thud on the ground and the horse <clears throat> stumbled, flipped over somehow or other and fell on the rider. Now, a horse is very heavy. How heavy horses are, I don't know. But I mean, a horse is, you know, weighs 500 pounds, 1,000 pounds. Heavy enough that, you know, if, if 50 pounds, 20 pounds falls on somebody, they could break the ribs. And here we have a, a huge horse fell on someone. So everyone figured, you know, um, automatically the whole crowd let out a big yell. And they thought that the, this happiness had turned into, you know, uh, mourning. Very, very uh, difficult for a, a person to survive such a thing. So they looked at the Rebbe and they figured that the Rebbe would be, you know, surprised or some some sort of sign of, uh, of emotion or change would come over his face. Absolutely nothing. The Rebbe just signified, like, what do you, what's wrong? Why are you stopping as though he didn't even know what was happening. <clears throat> and so the Hasidim, were, they wanted to say, you know, a Rebbe. They, they, not only that, to make matters worse, who did the horse fall on? It was, fell on the Rebbe's son. It ends up that the Rebbe's son, Nachum, was an equestrian. He knew how to ride horses. And for some reason, the horse fell on him. So and they knew that the Rebbe must have known this. And nevertheless, the Rebbe did not show any sign whatsoever that anything had occurred, and he just told them to keep being happy. And so they did. You know, they had no choice. And doctors came, and they they, they, they started, uh, you know, trying to work on the, on the boy. And they looked up as though, you know, it's a lost cause. And the Rebbe just insisted that everybody just be happy. And, um, and so they did. They kept on singing. They carried on singing. They carried on playing. And the, the doctors, after about five, ten minutes, the doctors looked up again with a, a surprise as though something had happened. You know, something had happened, something not tragic. After about 20 minutes, the boy stood up and he hobbled away. He had broken one leg. <clears throat> Everybody, of course, was very, you know, happy that the boy wasn't killed. The next day they came to the Rebbe and they asked the Rebbe, the older Hasidim, if they could explain, if the Rebbe could explain what happened, why did the Rebbe not show any sign of surprise or shock 
on this terrible thing that happened when the so the Rebbe said, ask a better question. Why not ask why I made a happy day? Why I made all of a sudden you know, a festival in the middle of nowhere? So they said, well, really, that is a question. Why? So the Rebbe said, I'll tell you why. Because I saw that there was a tragedy was awaiting my son. And that there was supposed to happen to him the worst of all. And um, I prayed to rescind the decree. didn't help. So I reckoned that the only thing that might save him was happiness because it says that Simcha Purit's gather that happiness breaks through all barriers so therefore things were bad enough to that we should add on our negative added energy to this bad thing is certainly not going to help so I said we should make a circus and sure enough it worked that's why I told everyone to be happy I knew something was going to happen and our happiness was what actually saved it. So it comes to show us that we're much more in control of the world than we think we are. Of course, we're total, We're not totally in control, but we're much more in control. And that's because that's the way God made it. He put man in the world so that we would improve the world. And everybody knows that we can do the opposite. You know, we can, man is very adept at making war and destroying things. And <clears throat> It says there's a saying that one fool can destroy what would take 100 people to build. But on the other hand, a little bit of light pushes away a lot of darkness. So by being positive, sometimes that can flip around the whole negative situation to be positive itself. And uh, hopefully by working and waiting and doing everything we can to bring Mashiach, it'll actually bring Mashiach and we'll have a really good world in one instant. See you all tomorrow at 8.15.